Hobbits, hobbits, hobbits. Uh, right, let's start with the hobbits. We're going to start with their skin. Um, I'm going to do it pretty much all the same across all four of them. Uh, but we're going to start with a base coat of Zandri Dust. It's just going to go across all the skin. That needs a good shake. It's going to be really tricky to hold this. Try and be as neat as possible with this, and hopefully, it'll have the uh, desired effect that I'm after. Just kind of giving them a bit more of a not natural, more of an earthy feel. Let that dry, and um, we'll come back. So now that that has dried, we're going to go over the flesh with gullum and flesh. Going to go over the flesh with gullum and flesh. Can't talk. Nice and carefully. Don't want loads, just to give it a bit of a, a warm feeling, like they're actually alive. There we go. Let that dry, and we'll come back in a moment. So now that our gullum and flesh has dried, we've got a nice uh, skin tone. We're going to highlight it with some Vallejo basic skin tone. Can we see that? Let's focus. Good focus. Good focus. There we go. Basic skin tone from Vallejo model color. Take a little bit of that, put it on our palette. Now, it is only a tiny bit because hobbits aren't very big. Just add a touch of water on this, just to help it flow a bit better. <clears throat> and what we're going to do, we're going to get the shins, calves, pick out toes, carefully get fingers. That wasn't carefully, that was awful. Big out his nose. Big 
just looks a bit rubbish at the minute, but I promise it will tidy it up, make it look a bit better. With the hobbits being so small as well, it's quite difficult. But carefully go around, block in your colours. If you haven't got the basic skin tone, don't worry, use something like um, Cadian Flesh Tone, something like that. It's a bit redder, but it will do the job. Excuse me. There we go, that looks awful. But there we are. Colours are blocked in. There we go, focus. Yeah, colours are blocked in. It's given us our, our basic highlights. But what I'm going to do is, am I going to use this? Yeah, we'll try this. Take some luminous flesh from AK and we're going to try a bit of this as well, just to pick out the highest points. And you only want a tiny bit because we're even uh, using even less than before. And we'll thin it down a bit. And I'm just going to go not like that. Just going to go like knuckles, noses, chin, cheek, top sort of cheekbones there. Try and get the top lip like that. Maybe the bottom of the jawbone like that. Nose, lip. Chin, any like prominent features, sharp features. Tops of the shins. So you have some sort of rough looking hobbits looking like that. And what I'm going to do now is take my golem and flesh again. Get some of this, put it on your palette because we want to water it down so we make a bit of a glaze with it something something that resembles that yeah something like that and we're going to go over the skin again hopefully this will 
stop them looking so ill and pale and bring a bit of colour back into them. You can do this several times, build up the colour where we want it. Stop it pulling in any places because we're just trying to tint the uh, skin at the minute. Yeah, okay. Get it out of the eyes there. We don't want the eyes covering up. Get it out of his neck. It's a bit heavy around there. <clears throat> I think a couple of coats of that and that will hide a multiple uh, multitude of sins so we'll give that another go in a minute once that's dry so we're going to paint the uh, clothes of these little hobbits right now we're going to go like the artwork we're going to give this one a blue jacket this one green jacket uh this one brown jacket and this one a brown jacket and all various shades of tan brown black um trousers as well but we'll start with the blue jacket i'm going to take some asuman blue asuram blue it's going to be a little bit lighter than what we need i do believe but we can darken it down with some non oil So carefully, neatly as we can, especially not getting any on the flesh parts where we've already painted. Now, if you've already glued it in, then don't have to worry about this side. I obviously haven't, so I can paint it. It's nice to see the amount of detail that they put on the back here as well, even though it's never going to be seen under normal viewing circumstances. Like you're not you're not even going to see it if you pick it up as a complete model and say oh yeah look at all the back and stuff on the back especially sam there and all his pack you're never going to see all that it's not too bad actually it's a little bit darker than i was expecting but it looks okay Right, now we've done that, we'll go for the green cloak, uh, green jacket, and for that I'm going to take some Creed Camo. Same process again, just going over the jacket with Creed Camo. always get these two mixed up which one's Mary which one's Pippin
So now we are going to take some Garagak sewer and we are going to go over Sam and Frodo's jackets. Now we'll do Frodo first because he's I've tidied up it a little bit with um some grey seer out of the pot just to get back to the base coat a bit. Now, while I've also got this out, I'm going to pick out, I think this is Pippin. No, Mary. I don't know. I'm going to pick out his trousers anyway. So, trousers and Sam's jacket. We'll have to go around again, picking out some other bits. Because at the minute, I'm just going over all of like the straps and things like that. And if I decide I'm going to do them different colour, I'll have to pick them out with grey here again. So I've gone around uh, with the Garagax sewer and got all the bits I want. I've also done uh, Mary's bag. This one is Mary. Uh, this one is Pippin. So I've done the trousers, trousers and the jacket for Frodo, jacket for Sam and Mary's bag. Um, yeah, just go around it, pick out the bits that you do want with uh, Garagax sewer. So... Next bit, I'm going to do the other two pairs of trousers. I'm going to do Pippins and Sam's with snakebite leather. With this one, I'm also going to do uh, Frodo's waist jacket, waistcoat. He's got going on right in here, this bit. So it almost goes all the way up to his neck. He has got a shirt on underneath. Done this the wrong way around, really. Should have started with a shirt and then worked outwards because it wouldn't matter so much about being so neat. But here we are, we're here. Frodo's waistcoat. So I've gone around with the snake bite leather. 
I've also got Pippin's hair with this because I think that kind of resembles his hair colour quite nicely. Um, gone with both the bags here. Um, this one looks slightly darker because I went a little bit heavier. This one looks slightly lighter because I went a little bit lighter with it. Uh, but what we're going to do is take some Agros Dunes and we're going to go over Sam and Mary's hair. One thing to remember when doing the hair is to get all the hair. So don't forget the feet. Like that. Make sure you've got a nice tidy base coat when you do this because it's quite a light colour. It um, will show the colour beneath it very easily. That's Mary. And there's Sam. While we're doing hair, I'm going to take some wildwood and we're going to get Frodo's hair. It's very dark, Frodo is. The others have got quite light colours on them, but Frodo is all browns and very dark. I wonder if it was a uh, aesthetic choice by the costume designers. To make him dark. He's not a dark character, but he's uh, definitely got some troubles with the ring and whatnot. have a quick tidy up with Grace here because I want to get these shirts as well so I'm gonna to have to do a smaller brush get in there with a nice bit of thin Grace here and tidy up where I can and um, yeah I'll uh, come back to you after I've done that so now the uh, colors are dried we are going to take some apothecary white give it a good shake because it's very stuck to the bottom um, but give it a good shake and we're going to get these shirts. So I'm going to take paint that just closed on the paintbrush. So we're going to take some and I'm going to put it on a palette just here. Just so I've got a bit more control over what I'm doing. This is a size zero 
um, paintbrush just so we can keep a good point. And we're just going to get in there nice and carefully, just like that. Ideally, you'd start with this colour and work your way up to the jackets. So if you are watching this video, do your shirts first and then do the other bits. So you don't have to try and fiddle about and getting them in small corners. It's as easy as that. Uh, so what we're going to do now is get that cabbage. We're going to take some Plague Bear flesh for this. And we're just going to go over the lot, lot of it. Taking care not to get it anywhere else. And you're probably thinking that looks nothing like a cabbage at the minute, and you'd be right, because it doesn't. But that's okay, we're just laying down some base colours. Um, so, next couple of bits are going to be on the back. You don't have to do these if you don't want to, but we'll do them since I've got them. I'm going to take some lead belcher. And I'm just going to hit them pots and pans that Sam is carrying. So he's got like a cup or something here. Obviously got a big pan there. And no, by no means are we going to see this, so do not worry. If you don't want to do that, or if you've already glued it in. Oh, he's also got a pot on his shoulder there. Now, bits like that, I would be more tempted to, well, I am more tempted to paint because you may see it. Because it's a bit higher up, it's just behind his shoulder. Now, if you go, if you look at it, you're going to be, that is going to be your view and angle. But if you look at it like that, you can just about see it poking there. Now, you might not be able to see it once it's all fully built. But while we're at this stage, it wouldn't hurt just to give it a quick coat. And then if you do see it, beautiful. You've already painted it. If you don't see it, doesn't matter. Because you've already painted it. Uh, right, the bedroll that Sam is carrying, I am going to paint with some skeleton hoard. definitely see this so we definitely need to hit it with some paint Wonderful. Well, that is our Hobbits base coated. So we'll let all that dry. Um, and then we get some washes where we want washes. We get some highlights where we want highlights. And we'll start to smarten them up a bit. Be back in a minute. Okay, so now that's dry. We're going to take some Gorefall Brown. And we're going to highlight up our darker browns, our uh, wildwoods, our um, Garagat sewers, bits like that. So get some on your brush, get some on your palette, make sure it's uh, 
flowing nicely. And what we want to be looking at here is get a nice point on your brush is the edges and what also one is the knees because the knees are going to get quite a bit of wear and tear so they're generally going to be a bit more worn than the rest of it creases come up to the knee come down More on the palette. Uh, all right, we get this knee. We get Sam's jacket. So we've gone around with our, our Gorfo Brown. Uh, now I'm going to take some Ushabiti Bone and I'm going to highlight up the lighter browns. Same process as before. Don't have to go crazy. Just on the raised edges, get the knees, get the creases. So very similar, we'll start with Sam because he's got a very big prominent knee there. It's quite a heavy contrast so we'll take it very lightly and just catching the, light, the, the very edges. So now that your Ushabiti bone, bone has dried, take some Agros Dunes. You're going to want one dollop of agro, Agros, Agros Dunes. I can't talk. And we're going to thin that down quite a lot. Almost so it's transparent. Three. I think that'll do us. Yeah, that'll do us. So that's ratio wise, probably like one to four. And that's sort of look we're looking for. So it's almost transparent on your palette just here. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to use this as a glaze, right up your brush, and go over them bits that you just did just to tone them a bit back, the uh, Ushabiti bone back a little bit. You only need a little bit. Now if you not happy with how light it is still, or you want to go a little bit further and push push the uh, contrast, take some more after this is dried and just go over them areas once again until you're happy with it. 
personally, I'm happy, happy with it like that. So what I'm going to do is shade up the uh, metallics. Just take some non-oil. Excuse me. And we are going just going to shade these metallics. Go in with your non-oil over the top of them. Like I said previously, we're not going to see this, so there's no point going to town on it. The contrast has done the hard work for us on these bits. Careful not to put your arm in the palette. So we can take some Nurgling Green and we are going to highlight our green jacket from Mary. Get a bit on your paintbrush. I'm just going to pick out the sharpest edges on this. Whilst I still have the Shabbity bone, I am quickly going to take a touch of it just for this cabbage. And again, just pick out the highest, sharpest points. Now, at that, I would be happy to call our hobbits done. Obviously, still need to do the undergrowth and the trees and the, the ground. But the hobbits themselves are done. Now, they are extremely small miniatures. And there's a hell of a lot of detail on them. So, to go through it all and, and do it all would be beyond my skill but you can see we've got some detail on the back there if you wanted to you could go to town on it and leave it separate so you can pull it out and have a look i've not done that i've just let the contrast do the work here i think i'm happy with that i am going to tidy the base up around the bottom around the trees here in between the legs and whatnot um so it's ready for the undergrowth, which will hopefully be in the, the next video of this series. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.